I just realized I don't have a lamb recipe on my channel. So today we're making lamb steaks. Now we could cook them outside on the grill, you could barbecue them, but today I'm gonna to be doing it on the stove in a cast iron pan. And we're gonna season these up with some rosemary and garlic for just some really fabulous flavor. And at the end, I'm gonna add a little bit of wine to make a nice little sauce that we can drizzle over our steaks. So I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to make it right after this. So today I was at Trader Joe's and I spotted these grass-fed, 100% grass-fed, pasture-raised lamb steaks. And I got pretty excited because 100% grass-fed means that it's just been eating that, right? A lot of times you'll see meats, hamburger, uh, turkey, whatever it might be, that says grass-fed. And you think, oh, you're getting the best. Well, you're not necessarily, okay? Because you don't know if they're feeding them grass the whole time or maybe at the end they're feeding them grain to fatten them up. So look for 100% grass-fed, that's the best. All right, so what we want to do here is take our meat and just let it sit out on the counter for about an hour to get it up to room temperature. And what that's going to do is going to help it cook more evenly. So I'm just going to place mine here on a paper towel covered plate because I want to pat it dry so that it gets a nice sear on it. Now I'm going to cut my steak into smaller pieces just because it's just really big. So I'm just going to cut this down a little bit and just kind of go in places where it's naturally, you know, formed. I could just cut this in half. So I've got one piece here and if you've got a big piece that has a lot of fat along the edge, like right here, then you want to make a little score into that fat and that will keep the steak from curling up on you. So if you have one that has that, just give it a little slice. Now I'm going to season up the steaks very simply with just some nice salt and pepper. And I'm going to do both sides. So I'm cooking up some potatoes to go with my steaks. I'm using gold potatoes here that I got from Trader Joe's and I always buy organic because they have the least amount of pesticides. So I'm cutting these up into small pieces so they'll cook up quickly and we're going to make garlic mashed potatoes. So I'm adding some fresh garlic to my potatoes. Here I've got some cloves here, several. You can use quite a few when you do this and it's not overpowering. So just peel off the skins and then we're gonna just toss the whole clove right in the pot of potatoes and let it cook. And then once the potatoes are ready, the garlic will be soft and we can just mash it up. So let me show you my setup here. That is a plate with some foil on it. That's where the, the steak is gonna go after I cook it and I'm gonna keep it warm while I'm making the sauce. So here is my cast iron pan. We're preheating that over, right now it's on low heat just because I got some other things to do. There's my potatoes over there. Now over here I've got my rosemary, I got it out of the garden, my backyard, and I've cut pieces about, that's about four inches long, I'm probably not going to use all of this, but I always like to have a little extra. And here I have some garlic, uh, just like I put in the potatoes, only notice I've left the skins on. Now, anybody got any ideas why I left the skins on, and I'm going to leave them on when I add them to the pan when they're cooking the steaks? It's because I don't want the garlic, this will help keep it from burning and protect it a little bit so that it just cooks in, you know, because we're cooking over some pretty high heat. But I am going to crush it, so I'll just take it over here onto my cutting board. So usually what I do is I take the little rough edge off there, cut it off, and then I just give it a little whack just to kind of, you know, crush it a little bit, and that way it releases the oils when it gets in the pan. And you get that wonderful flavor, and like I said, leave the skin on. All right, so we got our pan preheating over here. You want your cast iron to be nice and hot. So I'm gonna take some avocado oil. You could use olive oil, but I like avocado oil because it has a higher smoke point and it has, it's a very neutral flavor. Swirl it around. Let it get hot. I'm on medium heat. Now we're gonna take our steaks and I'm just gonna lay them in there and we're gonna sear them for about two minutes. So you hear that nice sizzle? That's what you want to hear. Now if it's spittering around at you like it is, you can use one of these things, which is a uh, grease guard, splatter guard, whatever you want to call it. 
I love this thing. I just got it and uh, I'm using it for everything and it helps keep my stove and me cleaner <laughs> from all the splatter from the oil. And yet it lets you know the air flow through so you're not uh, steaming it. All right, let's have a look-see here. We've got a couple of minutes. Now these are not going to be done in two minutes. All right, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful searing going on. These are about a little, this piece here in particular is about over an inch thick and it's going to take a little longer to cook. So we're going to sear the second side for a couple more minutes and then I'll show you what we do. All right, so it's been almost three minutes on this, each side. So I'm going to turn the temperature down to low. And have a look over there, it looks good. Now we're going to add some butter to the pan along with some rosemary and our crushed garlic with that skin on it, right? That's what we did. So I'm going to add some more butter because we need to have some butter in there. Get that to melt. I'm going to work that rosemary in there so that, that those oils infuse into the butter and the garlic. I'm going to just work it in. Okay, I'm going to turn my temperature back up to medium. Mm -mm -mm. This is looking good. So that garlic is going to cook. I'm going to turn it over every once in a while. Oops, keep that skin on there if you can. Sometimes they fall off. And then we're going to take a spoon. I've got a small spoon here. That's all right. Hopefully you can see this. And I'm going to start basting the sticks with that sauce. And that's going to help cook it. And we're going to cook it here like this for a few more minutes or until I'm going to use my instant read thermometer here. We want to get the temperature up. For me, I like it at 140, 145. And that's like a nice medium rare. And like I said, we're going to keep cooking this. It's probably going to take another five, six, maybe seven minutes. I'm not sure. Just whatever it takes. And it depends on how thick your steaks are. This one's going to take the longest because it's the thickest. And you can turn it over every once in a while and cook that, that side. All right, let's take a reading and see where we're at on our steaks and get an idea of how much longer. All right, we'll go with the big one first, huh? I'll just stick it right in there. And it says, well, it says 145, 146. All right, we're going to take these off. Place them on this plate I have over here to keep them warm. Now I'm going to turn that temperature back down and I'm going to add the wine to this. I'm going to leave everything in there for right now. This is just a red wine, guys. Use anything you like. A port works really well. But this is just a, a red wine I had in the, in, back in my pantry. So use what you have. Now you might want to add a little bit of salt to this. Now I use, I use salted butter, so you probably don't want to add too much salt, okay? So I'll just add a little bit and a little bit of pepper. And we're going to let this simmer and, and cook down just a little bit. Now while that's simmering, my potatoes are done, so I'm going to go ahead and just mash those um, and get those done, and so then we can serve this up. Oh yeah, let's cover our meat so it stays warm. We want it to rest for just a few minutes anyway. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of balsamic vinegar to this to kind of sweeten it up just a little bit because the wine makes it a little bit acidic and the balsamic has a little sweetness to it. So we're going to pour maybe a teaspoon in there. I'm going to take a little taste and we can adjust our flavors accordingly. Oh, that's nice. I like it with a little bit of balsamic. It gives it a little sweetness. Just kind of balances out the flavors. I'm going to let this continue to simmer for a few more minutes. All right, so the mashed potatoes are done cooking. You can see here, now here's my garlic here. I wanted to show you this. It's, it's so soft. It's very soft, so you see that? I mean, it just mashes right in. It's gonna add some great flavor. And I've got some milk and butter here that I'm adding to this that I've heated up in the microwave, so it's nice and hot. You wanna add hot liquids to hot potatoes, right? And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mash these up until they're mashed potatoes. We'll add some salt too, of course, and a little bit of pepper. 
And yes, I left the skins on because, well, I see no reason to take them off. It's more work. And with their organic potatoes, you know, you can leave them on. And you're getting extra nutri nutrition from it as well. All right, so everything's ready. I've got my mashed potatoes done and we've got our steaks done with our nice, beautiful sauce that has such a nice flavor and our garlic. I want you to have a look at that garlic. It's nice and toasted up. And you can actually serve that with uh, maybe right on top of your steak with your mashed potatoes. All I can say is yummy, yummy, yummy. Really, this is so delicious. My husband is gonna love it for dinner tonight. He should be here pretty soon. Uh, so I tell you guys, the sauce really makes the dish as it almost always does. The, the lamb itself is not, like sometimes it has a reputation for being gamey. This is not gamey at all. This is from New Zealand. I don't know, it's just delicious. I mean, the flavors are spot on. You are gonna love this. Please make it. Let me know down in the comments how you like it and subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, we'd love to have you. Just click the subscribe button at the end of the video or below the video and click that bell next to it because that is the notification bell and that tells you when my new videos come out every week and you'll be the first to know. So thanks again for watching everybody. We'll see you next time. I hope you enjoy the recipe.